All right, good morning. I uh, hope you are enjoying your day away from school. Um, I know that you were uh, heartbroken when you realized that you couldn't learn any physics today. So I thought I'd do you a favor uh, and and give you something, some fun for your day off. And what better thing to do than momentum in two dimensions? So, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take um, sort of the simplest um, two-dimensional momentum problem. And uh, after you do this, you should be able to um, do the check for understanding problem that is posted on Schoology. Um, now, um, if you are in seventh period, this is going to look familiar to you because it's very similar to what we did yesterday. Um, if you find yourself that, that you're good with this and you can skip straight to the, the practice problem that's on Schoology, that's, well, do that. You don't have to watch this video if, if you feel like you're comfortable with this. All right, so basically we're going to be talking about momentum, um, in two dimensions. So the, the thing that I think about a lot is I think about that, um, that pool game that you guys play on your phones um, where um, it, pool is actually a, a very good explanation of or a very good example of how you um, you do how conservation of momentum can work in two dimensions so the idea here is right you might have a ball here that you uh, give some velocity this way and let's say, it, I'm going to call this ball A. And let's say it hits a stationary ball B. And let's say that it makes ball B go, um, well, so it hits it. Then a moment later, it's going to make ball B go this way um, at a certain angle that we'll call... Uh, let's call it uh, 13 degrees and the question is which way if this is ball B which way is ball A gonna go all right and then let's put some numbers to this so let's say that ball A is going um, let's say 12 meters per second here let's say that ball B starts at zero meters per second and eventually gets going to a speed of let's say seven meters per second and the question is how fast is ball A going and what angle is ball A traveling at? All right. So this is really just a conservation of momentum problem just like we've done except that instead of just being in one dimension it's in two dimensions. So instead of this being a regular scalar equation it's now a vector equation and if you think back to last semester all a vector equation means is that you are doing things in the x direction and you're answering the same question in the y direction so we want to we need all the Initial px is to equal px prime, all the initial py is to equal py prime. So what does that mean here? Well, we've got two objects, right? We have two objects at the beginning, we've got two objects at the end. So the sum of px's is going to equal um, px of a plus px of b equals px prime of a plus px prime of b. And we're going to have the same py of a plus py of b equals py prime of a plus py prime of b. So those are our equations we've got to solve. And what we have to do is we then have to find what the x and y components of each of these momenta are. So. I'm going to leave some space here because we're going to come back to that in a second. Um, but what we got to do is we got to break things into components. So what I want to do first 
is I want to take a look at what we have, pardon me, and convert it into momenta. By the way, uh, I, you can't solve this yet because you have to know things like, let's assume that the mass of A is 0.5 kilograms, and let's say the mass of B is 0.6 kilograms. Sorry, can you see that? Okay, so what are you going to do? Well, we already, uh, let's, let's break this down into um, some things. So I'm going to come back to this part here in a minute. But let's look at, so let's look at things that we know. We know, right, that our that our initial velocity in the A direction is 12, and our final velocity in the A direction we don't know, so VA prime we don't know, and we know our initial velocity for B is zero, and the final velocity for B is, we said, seven meters per second, but we're not going to be doing things with velocities, we're going to be doing things with momentums. So we're going to convert all of these into momentums. So, PB prime is zero. Uh, sorry, not prime, PB is zero. PB prime is going to be um, 0.6 times seven. So, I don't have a calculator here, let me think for a second. So what is that? 4.2 kilogram meter per second. Um, PA prime, we don't know. PA is gonna be 0.5, which is the mass of A, times 12. So six kilogram meter per second. All right, there we go. Now, but in order to get into Plugging into this equation, I've got to convert all these things into their x and y components. So looks, let's look at PA first. PA, we know from here, is going exactly this direction with a momentum of 6 kilogram meter per second. What does that mean? Well, remember, I'm going entirely in the x direction, so that means my PAx is going to be 6. I'm going to drop the units for simplicity's sake. And what's my PAy then? Well, I'm not going up or down, so it's 0. All right, PB is not moving. So that's easy. That means both PBX is zero and PBY is zero. All right. Let's go on to PA prime. We don't know anything about, so I'm going to skip that for a second, but let's go on to PB prime. So PB uh, prime is going that direction, right? And we know that that direction has an angle of 13 degrees. And we found up here that that is 4.2 is the hypotenuse. So now this is where we have to do the work because we've got to find what... Um, PBX is and PBY. So we're going to have to do some Sokotoa here. So the sine of 13 degrees is going to equal the opposite, which is PBY, over the hypotenuse. And the cosine of 13 degrees is going to equal the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. I'm gonna take a break on the video because I have to go find myself a calculator and I will see you in a moment.